Greetings Captains and welcome to this unboxing video and review of the Gladiator MK2 joystick from VKB Sim. I recently reviewed a pair of rudder pedals from the same manufacturer and I enjoyed them very much. Therefore I've really been looking forward to check out this joystick. By the way, if you haven't watched the rudder pedal review video yet, then I've provided a link in the video description below for you to go check out. The stick was sponsored and sent to me by Nicholas from the explained.org store. So once again, thank you very much Nicholas. This is a box containing the joystick. Let's see what's inside. In the box we have the actual joystick, what a surprise and a quick installation guide. What's really neat about the VKB SIM products is that they are using magneto-resistive sensors or mass sensors instead of usual hall sensors. Mass sensors are so-called non-contact sensors, which means that there is no friction and that they are extremely resistible. At the same time, they have an ultra-high resolution, making them extremely precise. Now, the rudder pedals were 100% steel and aluminium. That's not the case with the joystick here though. The base plate here is the only visual part that's made of metal, while the rest of the joystick is made of polycarbonate. Now don't get me wrong, the joystick still feels really sturdy and high quality. The joystick is actually a replica of a real World War II KG-12 grip. It's got a right hand grip design, as you can see, there are lots of buttons to config, triggers, hat switch, etc. 12 buttons in total, but with the shift and mode functions, it's actually 29 logical buttons in total. We got a throttle control here on the side. Two LEDs shows which modes being used and can be changed by pressing the mode button here. The joystick is pretty heavy and in the bottom it has these silicone feet which gives it a strong surface grip. In combination with the weight of the joystick it makes it extremely stable when put on the table and controlled in flight. The joystick has a twist grip which makes up for the rudder which is neat if you don't have a pair of rudder pedals. All in all a very neat joystick that feels very very good. If you have the MK4 rudder pedals, you can connect them to the joystick here on the back with a cable that came with the rudder pedals. The installation is super easy, it's all plug and play, so no drivers are needed. Just plug in the USB cable into a USB 2 port in the computer and we're good to go. I've done that now and will fire up X-Plane 11 for the first time with the new joystick. Let's start off by going into settings to calibrate the joystick. Let's click calibrate and then first move the joystick through all axes. and click finish. Before we can get airborne, we just need to assign axis for the stick. Here we have roll, pitch, and for now I'll ignore the twist axis because I have the rudder pedals connected. Let's also assign functions for a couple of the buttons. Flaps up. Flaps down. Trim down. Trim up. Trim up. 
break. And we are done with the calibration and ready to take them for a spin in a flight. Okay folks, we are at Molokai, Hawaii and ready to take off from runway 23. Like in the review of the MK4 rudder pedals, we are flying the Cessna 172 from Airfoil Labs and it's the idea that we'll fly a casual pattern around the airport to come back and land again here on runway 23. The aircraft is configured for flight, so let's get airborne. Flaps 10 for takeoff and release parking brake. Smoothly increase engine power to full throttle. <coughs> He's back on the stick and we're rotating. Flying here on our upwind leg, heading for 1000 feet above ground level. Okay, it's maybe not the most logical aircraft I've chosen for this flight with this kind of joystick. A helicopter, a jet or maybe an Airbus would probably have been what you would have expected, but anyways, the stick works seamlessly and feels great. Very responsive, just like the rudder pedals, also from VKB Sim that I reviewed previously. Flaps up. We'll turn left onto the crosswind leg. Normally I fly the Cytec Pro Flight Yoke, so to be honest, flying with a joystick is very different, but I think I'm doing alright. Anyways, the joystick feels really good, all control axis works well and without quirks, so does the throttle control. Left again towards the downwind leg and parallel to the runway on our left. As you can see, the joystick is extremely stable, no skidding or tumbling around on the table. It's very well made, just like the VKB rudder pedals, it feels really robust and very high quality. Throttle down a bit. Let's level off now. Power down a bit. Here's our runway where we'll land in just a second. Flaps 10. Starting our descent. Turning left towards our base leg.
laps 20. Left to water our final. Full flaps. Now, I haven't configured all buttons yet, but I like the fact that the joystick has all these many buttons to assign to different functions, flaps, pitch trim, gear, toggle, etc, you name it. With the mode and shift buttons, the physical buttons becomes many many more logical buttons, which is great. But I'm the kind of guy that suddenly forgets which button is configured to do what in one mode instead of the other, so I'm not sure I'll be using the modes. We'll see. It's great to have the opportunity though. Flare and touchdown. In conclusion, a very robust joystick with lots of configurable buttons. The mode and shift functions accessed by either pressing the mode button or the shift button on the front of the stick increases the number considerable to 29 logical buttons. Even though I'm not sure I'll be using all these logical buttons. Control of the joystick is very smooth and the stick feels very good in the hand. Worth noting is that the joystick is designed as a right hand grip. The twist grip can be assigned to the rudder axis, which is neat if you don't have rudder pedals. If you, on the other hand, have a pair of VKB rudder pedals, then they can be connected to the back of the stick, which allows your PC to see the pedals and stick as one device. The base plate and the silicone feet in combination with the weight of the joystick makes it extremely stable on a table when controlled in flight. All in all, a really great joystick with a lot of great features, which is well worth checking out. I've provided a link to the explain.org store where it can be purchased for just below 100 US dollars. This was all for now. I hope you found it interesting. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you very soon. Until then, take care. <laughs>